right. Hello, my name is John Golden, Salesforce Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM. Welcome to another Expert Insight interview. I'm delighted to be joined from Minneapolis by Ursula Menches, who is three-time best-selling author, award-winning entrepreneur and sales expert. How are you doing? Ursula? I'm doing great. So glad to be here, John. Great. And Ursula is the founder of the Sales, of sales Coach Now, a, a speaker, um, and as I said, an author, and she has a new book, The Belief Zone, which is uh, an Amazon bestseller and has already uh, received two Beverly Hills Book Awards. And so today we're going to talk about The Belief Zone. Okay, so Ursula, your new book is Breaking Through Limit, Limiting Beliefs, right? So it's The Belief Zone, How to Significantly Increase Your Income Now by Stepping into the Belief Zone. So let's baseline this from the start. What do you mean by The Belief Zone? Sure. Well, what we found is what I found and what I found in all my years of coaching and speaking is that most people live in their comfort zone, right? It's mm -hmm. like, what is a comfort zone? It's that place where we get stuck and we stay and we don't do the things we're supposed to do. In the world of sales, we don't pick up the phone. We don't follow up. We don't close the sale. And so I said, well, what is outside of the comfort zone? Well, outside of the comfort zone is a new belief zone. So in order to move to a new belief zone, you've got to let go of the beliefs that are keeping you stuck in your comfort zone. So that's the idea. Right. So, um, okay. So as you said, I mean, comfort zones are called comfort zones for a reason because they're very, very comfortable. Um, and it's often, I mean, the fear of stepping outside your comfort zone is so, is so great to, to the point of uh, being debilitating and, and not just because often because you fear, you know, you'll fail if you step out your comfort zone, but sometimes it's because you fear you're going to succeed, right? Because life might change. So how do you, how do you get people, number one, to recognize they're in a comfort zone and secondly to have the confidence to start to think about breaking out yeah it's a great question so i i was recently um today actually i was talking to another client about this idea of she said i'm afraid of success and i said most of us really aren't afraid of success like let's really pull that apart what are you really afraid of what happens if you grow a half a million dollar business mm -hmm. and she said well you know i might compromise my relationships with my five kids or my husband and so it was, it was of course about what she was afraid she was going to lose so first we have to identify what's really true about that limiting like in their minds what's true about that limiting belief and then what's not true so i simply asked her i said what's not true about your limiting belief that when you grow a half a million dollar business, you're going to lose these relationships. And she said, well, the truth is at a half a million dollars, I'm going to have a fabulous team in place. I'm going to be working less. I'm going to be charging more. I'm going to have more time with my kids. And so we start to dismantle this limiting belief. And suddenly she started to see what was true. And the truth was when she has her half a million dollar business, she'll be charging what she's worth. She'll be working in amazing ways with her clients and she'll have all the, a lot more time with her family because she'll have the right team in place. So that's how you move from this comfort zone to this new belief zone. And, the, and the, how do you help people? Because uh, sometimes, I mean, people don't recognize that they're in a comfort zone to begin with, right? Or, or shall I put it another way, maybe they've convinced themselves they're not in a comfort zone. So how do, you, how do you help people unpack and see exactly where they are and where they could be? Yeah, we ask a lot of questions. The big question is, where do you want to go? In one of my books, I talk about your one great goal. Like, what's your big dream? And so they tell me what it is. And then I'll say, what's the number one thing that's stopping you right now? And immediately that first limiting belief will come out. I don't deserve it. Who am I to do this? Um, I can't afford it. You know, and it, they just start to come out so quickly. So by identifying what you really want and asking the question, what's stopping me? You'll quickly see what your limiting beliefs are right now. And one of the other things that I think is interesting nowadays that we face is because we live in this very, very strange world today where we're bombarded from all sides with, um, you know, social media and all these other things. And we can we can fall into this trap of constant comparison and and, you know, push putting ourselves down. Right. Because I see a snapshot of somebody's life and I go, oh, their life looks fantastic. And mine is terrible. I, there must be something wrong with me. So how do you how do you help people start to look at what are the things that that are in their control to actually change and what are not? Yeah. First of all, most of us only put things on Facebook or social, any kind of social media that like are the best versions of us, right? Like mm -hmm. we take 50 pictures to get one of us that looks good from this one direction. We post, you know, the great thing our child did in school that day, but not the 50 other times we cried over the last week, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a true sense of what's going on in the world. And I was just talking with another client and we, she was saying, you know, she compared herself to this health coach that was on, um, 
these TV shows. And I know of a health coach that her life was terrible and she hated <laughs> being on the show and it did not go the way we thought it would. And so what we saw and what was true was totally different. And I said, so be careful what you ask for. I said, what do you really want? And it's, it's getting to that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I do it myself. One of the things we have at, in my, at my company and my tribe and my clients is stay in your own lane. Stay in your own lane because this is where all the magic happens is right here. Not over here and not over here. Stop comparing and contrasting. Focus on what's next for you and be the best version of yourself. And the rest seems a little be a little bit easier. And I think that's a, that's a fantastic point because I think uh, people struggle with focus, right? As you say, stay in your own yes. lane and focus. And people struggle with that. And today, you know, everybody will say, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been, right? This, I'm so busy. No. But the reality is I'm so distracted. I'm more distracted than I've ever been. It's not that I'm busier, I'm more distracted. So how do you help people with focus? Because that is such a huge struggle for most people. People. Yeah, well, I, it's a great question, but I think it's about, like, you're right, it's, it's about not doing busy work. Because if you come out of corporate America and you start your own company, you're trained to sit at your desk for eight hours and pretend mm -hmm. that you're working. Well, we know in corporate America, statistically, we only work two hours a day, right? That's, studies tell us that. So I know that entrepreneurs are sitting at their desk doing nothing for, you know, six hours of those eight hours, they're forcing themselves to sit there. So for some of them, like, stop sitting at your desk. I want you to do two hours of focused work and then do something you're really excited about. Go play with your kids. Go have some fun. Go to the movies. I don't care. Just stop pretending that you're working when you're not. So only do those things that are going to move you forward. And I tell clients, like, ask yourself, does this move me toward my one great goal or does this move me toward my revenue goal or away from? And then you decide. But I'm big on clearing the plate and just focusing on what's important. And by the way, if, if you don't, like, here's my, you know, my little to-do list. If you don't have a to-do list, you're in trouble because your brain mm -hmm. is your to-do list. So by just writing down what you need to do today, your productivity goes up 25%. Like, keep it simple. <laughs> keep yeah. It simple. And okay. I think also... Um, not just your to-do list, but have your goals somewhere where you can oh, see. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yes. so, um, so what are some of the, when you're talking with entrepreneurs particularly, it was a great thing that you just said about how, you know, when you do go out on your own, yes, you, you do think, oh my goodness, I, I should be here at seven o'clock and I'm not going to leave till five o'clock. But what are some of the other uh, limiting beliefs that block entrepreneurs from growing their sales? So a lot of um, entrepreneurs were sales professionals or in some way learned to sell in a corporation. And so when they leave corporate America, they might've been a top salesperson at XYZ company, but they go out and they become a coach or a consultant. All of a sudden they're selling themselves. And that's a big shift because it, it brings up all their limiting beliefs. I always say, if you want to you know, grow, start your own company because it's going to bring up every mm -hmm. limiting belief you've ever had. And most people have imposter syndrome. Every, like I interview people on my show, even people who have become, you know, they're multimillionaires or super successful. They still have imposter syndrome, meaning like they think, who am I to be doing this? Or someone's going to find out that I'm not that smart. We all have that stuff. So I think part of it's accepting that that's part of the human condition and that's okay. Uh, but work on yourself. Um, in fact, I was quoted on a, a different podcast. I said, the more you work on yourself, the faster you grow. And they sent this to me and I, I put, I keep it on my desk to remind myself. It's true. The more you work on yourself, the faster you will grow. Yeah, I love that. That uh, I'm I'm going to remember that one, the imposter syndrome, because I, I think that is that is huge, and I think it's it's huge for for everybody because you're you're correct, is you amass all of this experience, but then when you go to use it, you start to go, Ooh, well, you know, I don't have quite this, and maybe they're looking for somebody with more, and you know, I don't really feel like I'm doing it. But the reality is that um, you know, if you have if you have worked hard and you have been successful to some degree or whatever you have something to share you just have to figure out what that is right yeah absolutely we all i always think if you're just two steps ahead of somebody else you're going to make a difference <laughs> in their business or their life right mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to teach them something and and whatever comes easy for you is not easy for somebody else and you forget that so so you get stuck in thinking oh i don't know enough you already know you already know enough just be two steps ahead and you can help people all yeah, uh, ex exactly. Um, I had a job once where uh, it was technical writing, and the and the subject matter expert used to come in and check the check the stuff. And it was only after a while I realized that the technical uh, the subject matter expert was one chapter ahead of me. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so what are some, what are other secrets that you wish, or maybe the number one secret that you wish all entrepreneurs knew about, uh, you know, how to increase sales? 
Yeah. Number one is know your numbers. The number one thing we do with all of our clients is teach them how to put together a revenue model and projections and project out their next year. The second they do that, they have, we can, you know, work backwards from the end result and clearly map out their sales and marketing plan. Most people, especially we work with a lot of women entrepreneurs who mm -hmm. numbers aren't their thing, or that's what they'll tell me. And I'll say, no, they will become your, th you're going to fall in love with numbers. We had a client who the first time I sat down with her, we did a half a million dollar projection. She almost threw up. I was the one typing the numbers. Um, within a year and a half, she was doing 1.5 million from mm -hmm. zero. I mean, that clear projection took her there because we saw the plans. It also gets into your subconscious in a way and you start to think, you start to get those ideas and those downloads pretty quickly on how to move forward. So create the projection, know your numbers. Well, because numbers don't lie at the end of the day, right? I mean, and that measure and track, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's a good, it's a good point because you're, uh, you know, once you lay out something like that, number one, you can, you can get a feel for what's realistic, what's not realistic. But as you say, it's something, it's something to track against, and it's something to be able to ask yourself on a daily basis: What am I doing? to help me reach that number. And I think what you said earlier about focus, that's a great way of focusing yourself is to say, yes. okay, I'm doing this right now. Is it actually contributing towards me hitting these numbers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and like that clear plan, if you really want to, like we talk about quantum leaps in my business and not everybody's up for a quantum leap, but if you want to take that major jump in revenue, or maybe you've been in business for a while and you have a half a million dollar business, you want to go to a million, you've got to create that million dollar projection because you'll, you'll change the way you think about your business and you'll see the opportunities that are probably right there in front of you that you didn't see before you had the numbers on paper. There's just something really powerful about doing it. Mm -hmm. So for those people who are watching and they're still going, okay, I get it. I'm probably in a comfort zone, but you know, I'm okay here. I'm, I'm okay in my comfort zone. Why do you also call your comfort zone? Zone, your danger zone I just think it's boring right like I, <laughs> I think if you're not growing like what's the point point? and I, I think that we're lying to ourselves a little bit if we say oh I'm so good in my comfort zone I doubt that because as humans our desires just keep popping up like we have so many desires to go to the next level or do this or do that so I think if you're saying that to yourself you might not be being truthful and maybe you're you know squelching some true desires that you really do have yeah, yeah, that, that's. I think a, that you yeah. believe you can't have, yeah. yeah. And that's a great. Uh, here's another thing, though. I think um, whenever whenever people look at making a change, right? As we talked about earlier, I mean, maybe they'll get worried about what does success look like, or I'll fail, or this looks daunting. How do you help people just take that first step? Because everything in life, regardless of what you do, it's always a series of steps, right? And you've got to take yeah. a first step. But we're really good at avoiding the at not taking the first step because we look at three hundred steps at once. Yeah. So, so there's a lot to unpack there, but really quickly, I mean, you're 95% more likely to succeed if you have a coach or a mentor. I believe to pay, if you pay someone to help you, you're going to show up for that. Right. And so as a coach, you know, if someone's paying me, you know, to really support them, I ask them to take, just take that first step. Just take the one step that's right in front of you right now. You can only, you can only take one step at a time anyway. So don't get overwhelmed by thinking you're going to have a million dollar business tomorrow. You're not. Tomorrow, these are the things we want to do between now and tomorrow. And just by having that support, I believe that people can move. Plus, we always tell our clients, we have several coaches in the business. Mm -hmm. I will hold that belief for you until you can. You might not believe you can have a million dollar business today, but I'm going to hold that belief with you. And there's something powerful about having that support to hold that space with you. So whether it's a coach, a mentor, an accountability partner, like find someone to help support you in just taking that first step. And that's, and, and that's an interesting point on, on coaching, right? It's because, and, and I've thought a lot about this. And actually the first time I had an, a move to uh, an executive level job, the first thing I did was hire a, hire a coach, right? Out, outside yeah. on my own dime and everything. But this is an interesting thing, right, is in general, we, we'll spend money with uh, a coach for our hobby. Maybe you'll hire a tennis coach or a golf coach or whatever. But generally speaking, like a lot of people won't, won't go out and hire a coach for the thing that puts bread on their table, the thing that, you know, they're doing 90% of their life. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that more people don't leverage coaching? That's a good question. I mean, if you're a professional sports, sports athlete, it's not even a question. You're going to have a coach, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we're, I don't know that, I mean, I think business coaching has become more mainstream. It's not, right. you know, it's still ra a rather young industry. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of it. I think like, but when you start, when you start to look at like Olympic athletes, the top performers in the world, they all have coaches, they have multiple coaches. And so if you want to be the best in your field, you have to have a coach. I mean, I've invested, I'm sure you have as well, you know, 
multi six figures in my personal coaching and development mm -hmm. because I know when I invest, I go to that next level. So I think it's changing. I think more and more people are. It's a multi billion dollar industry already. Like it's it's growing fast. Um, but I think in the business world, it's you know it's still catching on. Yeah, and and like I said, I mean, I think it's uh, I think if people take a step back for a moment uh, and look at as I said you know, the, the chances are they have a hobby that they probably invest time in. They probably have mentors. They probably, as I said, maybe you have a golf coach, maybe, you know, you have a personal trainer, to gym, whatever. You're, right. you're probably already paying people or asking people to help you. So why not in the thing, the, the thing that actually puts bread on your table? That's where you should be investing your, investing your time. Part of it may be, and here's another thing, right? So if you make the decision to, to take a leap, right? Yeah you then have you're then accountable for that right so yes. now now you have actually opened yourself up to accountability especially if you're a coach you've opened yourself up to being accountable for actually doing that so how do you help people because there's always an early stage of a process where you know self-doubt creeps in and you sort of want to back off and you think oh my goodness why did i even take that step yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I can't coach motivation. I can't mm -hmm. force someone to show up. So I'm really clear with people, like if they want to coach with us, they have to be ready to break through some stuff and to do some things they might not otherwise have wanted to do. So I think part of it is having that motivation already there. I mean, once they're working with us though, it's, it's you know, it's, it's immediately like just, you know, what, what do you feel like is getting in your way right now? Like what's blocking you and how can we shift that? And it's asking a lot of questions. And often, as you know, when you're coaching someone, they start to tell you, they start to talk through it themselves by asking one powerful question and they're coming to their own conclusion. All of a sudden, you know, I just had a client this morning and I was talking to her and she said, I got it. I just got my breakthrough. Cause at the beginning of a call, I would say, what's your, what's the breakthrough you need today? And then she's like, I got it. It was one small little belief that had been holding her back. So by asking powerful questions, we create the space to figure out what's stopping them. Yeah, I mean, it's always interesting that, uh, and especially this is always good for salespeople to remember that people uh, believe conclusions they arrive at themselves over anything you could of ever course. tell them. So your your job is not to tell them, your job is to help them uh, reach those conclusions. What have been some of the really surprising things that when you've worked with people, what have been some of the really surprising things that they have learned uh, that have, you know, or, or limiting beliefs that they have come across that maybe they were like, wow, I, I never really knew that. Yeah. So I have a client who, when we met her, she had a half a billion, million dollar business for 20 years, half a million, half a million in the construction mm -hmm. industry. Okay. And so I was fascinated because what she wanted was a million dollar business. Clearly she couldn't mm -hmm. get there herself. She's like, I need help. And I said, okay. And so my mind immediately is like, okay, so I want to get to like, what is this? So I started asking her some questions. Then all of the blue, she just said, you know, Ursula, no matter what, don't ever call me a salesperson. Um. And I said, tell me more about that. So she hated salespeople, all this stuff, right? We what we figured out though is of course she was the top salesperson mm -hmm. in the company. She had driven sales all these years. She, you know, but that one belief had stopped her. So we shifted it to, we did some belief work around it. I'm an NLP certified coach. We shifted it to, I am the top salesperson in my company. I love serving my clients. Boom. A year and a half later, she was doing 1.2 million a year looking at opening another location. One belief. I mean, that, that one still blows my mind. I interviewed her on my podcast and we still, I mean, she's still so happy, but the best part I want to share with you, the best part for her was not hitting 1.2 million. It was the fact that she grew her team. She wasn't mm -hmm. working all the time and she was getting a degree in theology, which is what her big dream was. So yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, I, by the way, that, that's a great example because I've come across that so many times of because people think that there's, or perceive a negative connotation around sales and being a salesperson that they do everything to avoid, you know, they won't call themselves a salesperson. They'll come up with crazy titles. <laughs> and I always say to them, I would say, that's all great, but guess what? Your prospect or customer, they know you're a salesperson. <laughs> So you can call yourself whatever you want. They already know. So why not be a salesperson? And as you say, um, bring value to them, help them, you know, serve them or whatever. But get away yeah. from this idea of just because there's been a few movies and popular culture, it doesn't mean you have to, you have to, uh, you know, buy into all of that. So yeah. what, are, what are some other ones, maybe uh, another example of something that you, you came across as a, as a limiting belief? Yeah, sure. So many. Um... A client who just didn't believe that 
you know, she could have a million dollar business, wanted a million dollar business, didn't believe that she could. But her limiting belief was all about more along that, like we talked about before, but the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and, you know, who am I to do this? I'm, you know, there were limiting beliefs about being a woman, being in, you know, I just, I know corporate America. Here's what I know. Um, this is not for me. And she held, there was one woman that she held up and she was always like, I want to be like this. But <laughs> I said, you're not her just be you. And mm -hmm. the more she started to be her authentic self on video and in all her ads, her sales just started to skyrocket. So I think so often we think we have to be somebody else or act a certain way, or like you said, have a different title. <laughs> By the way, calling yourself a consulting engineer, all these names that are made yeah. up is very confusing to the clients. I just want to say mm -hmm. that because they're going, well, can you sell me something or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When does the salesperson arrive? <laughs> yeah. um, but that's another, but that's another good one though. I, and I, cause I think, uh, you know, part of it too, obviously is, you know, understand who your real target um, buyer is. Oh, for is. sure. I mean, I remember, you know, years ago, I, I did something when I was um, doing some stuff on my own. And um, I just went to, I went to a group, it was an entrepreneur's group or whatever, but they were completely the wrong audience for me. Mm. And, and it was like, it was after a while I realized like, why am I trying to convince these people that I can help them? Because actually they're the wrong people and the, the help that I give them could give them belongs to a completely different level. Yes. Yes. So shortchanging ourselves and what, and yes. And thinking, oh, this is going to be an easy sale. When in fact, the next level might be the, the easy sale and they'll pay you more and they'll appreciate you more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're bumping up against the end of our time here, Ursula, but before we go, I wanted you to spend a, a couple of seconds to tell people a little bit more about themselves, how they can learn more about you and the kind of services you offer. Sure. So the easiest way is to go to sales with an S, salescoachnow.com. And there you can find um, our, what we have is a two-day course called Sales Camp, which we offer actually in San Diego and in the Minneapolis area. Nice. It's just two days to break through those beliefs. And every client starts there to see if we're a good fit. And then we talk about next levels from there. But all my books are on Amazon. That's probably the easiest and fastest way to get them. So thanks, John. I appreciate it. Excellent. Well, Ursula, this has been fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Uh, Ursula mentions has been really fascinating. Your book, The Belief Zone, I uh, encourage people to check it out, break through those beliefs, get out of your comfort zone. Um, I'll see you all again for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.